Awesome. Okay, great. Well, hey, thanks everybody for coming this morning. I know it's a little bit early, uh, and I appreciate you being patient so that we can let a few stragglers uh, filter in. Today, we're going to talk about something that uh, I think is passionate, um, that I'm passionate about. Also, the company that I work with, VKS, is passionate about, uh, and that is Industry 4.0 and the Connected Worker. So the plan today, I'm going to introduce you to our company, talk to you a little bit about what our company does, and then we're going to talk about Industry 4.0 a little bit. Who in the room right now is familiar with the phrase Industry 4.0? A lot more than yesterday. Good. You were here yesterday too, so did you know that before you came yesterday? or? Okay. <laughs> Great. So, um, so my name is Shannon. Uh, let's see. I'll introduce myself. My name is Shannon Bennett. I work with VKS. I'm a, uh, not a big fan of titles. My title, my official title is the Sales and Implementation Engineer. So I do a lot of different things with the company. I uh, help write technical documentation. I go visit customers and help them get the, the software up and running. I come to trade shows and work the booth. I do whatever they, uh, they need me to do. A little bit about the company. Really interesting story, actually. VKS was started in a manufacturing environment. Back in 2007, a company with a facility in uh, just outside of Montreal, Quebec, uh, and a facility in New York, uh, they identified some gaps in their operation, quite a few gaps in the operation, maybe some gaps you guys are seeing in your operation, right? They were seeing some excessive quality issues, they were seeing low productivity problems, they were seeing uh, some training issues, lack of standardization, excessive variability in their manufacturing operations. So, they, uh, back in 2007, they kind of started this, uh, started the development of VKS there in their own facility. Over the years, VKS kind of uh, went through multiple evolutions and iterations, uh, but eventually in 2011, <clears throat> sorry, I clearly came down with something traveling here this week, the, uh, uh, the, the manufacturing company spun VKS off as its own company in 2011. So since 2011, we've been selling VKS to other manufacturers around the world. Um, today, I think we have com customers in about 30 different countries. 15 different languages. So some of, the, some of the benefits that this company saw after implementing VKS, you can kind of see here at the bottom, right? Some pretty dramatic improvements in, in, uh, in defects and improvements in productivity. Um, the, the, this was across both facilities. The reduction in defects was really in a few targeted areas where they were really uh, had implemented VKS at a, at a high level. The, um, the next, but the next uh, bullet you see here, traceability, that is a huge thing for these guys, right? They were able to make much better decisions based on the data they were collecting at VKS. The old world of having this stuff on paper, which we're going to touch on here in a bit, um, didn't give them the availability to data that they needed to make smart decisions. They were really able to improve that uh, once they implemented VKS. There's really some soft skill improvement too, right? They saw some improvements in cross-training capability, the time to bring new employees up to speed in the operation which was really great. It helped them on the, uh, on the shop floor side. And of course, standardization is really the reason all of this happens, right? You get those processes and best practices documented, better standardization gives you a lot of different benefits right across the board. <clears throat> so what is VKS? VKS is really a, um, a, a paperless uh, or digital documentation system, uh, specifically for work instructions. Uh, so what I'll do is talk to you about each of the three uh, modules. You can see them here at the bottom. The modules really effectively do, uh, really shoot to accomplish the same goals, right? It's really th a three-phase goal with VKS, and that is to improve the process of creating, uh, creating new process documentation or creating work instructions. I want to make it as easy and as simple and as fast as possible to do that. People in the room that have done that work in the past, I'm one of them. Uh, my manufacturing background, <laughs> has resulted in a lot of work instruction creation, you know that this is kind of a pain in the, in, the, in the behind, right? So we wanted to make that initial upfront phase really simple and easy. <clears throat> so you can see here in VKS, you use, you really leverage images, you really leverage video uh, and, and, uh, and the mobility, right? The ability to deploy work instructions out to the shop floor in a really easy way. The second, the second thing we really wanted to do is make the management of this type of documentation as easy as possible, right, as simple. So in all of these modules, you're gonna have built-in version control, built-in approval, workflows, and all that kind of thing. So you can really manage the documentation in one location. The third leg to, to that kind of three-leg stool is making the deployment easier, right? We, we built an application that runs beautifully on a tablet, so you can deploy work instructions electronically down to the shop floor, uh, 
and it's super simple to do so. It's a browser-based application. You don't need uh, the software downloaded on each of the deployed devices. Uh, it's really uh, platform independent. <clears throat> so really the first module here, Lite, is really targeted for work instruction creation. Not a lot of uh, data capture capabilities or reporting there. This is really for, for small companies who need to just get their documentation into an electronic format and deploy them down to the shop. Uh, and for maybe companies who already have really solid data collection capabilities um, or solid MES and they want to integrate a really effective work instruction tool into that, into that system. <clears throat> the second module, Pro, is really about traceability. This is where we add electronic forms for data capture, for inspection confirmations, uh, that kind of thing. Some production reporting where you get a ton of traceability in there. Right? You're able to see who did what and when very effectively. And then a management uh, KPI dashboard built in as well at the pro level. <clears throat> VKS Enterprise is really about integration. Integration both on the software side, where we're able to integrate VKS with other software applications, like maybe your ERP or another MES application. Uh, but it's also about connecting to smart tools. So we really have two add-on modules for VKS Enterprise. Uh, one is uh, Tool Connect. The first one is Tool Connect. It's really a simple... Uh, I.O. connection where we can detect signals from pieces of equipment, torque wrenches, screwdrivers, sensors, that kind of thing, and advance work instructions automatically, count units, count cycles. We also have Tool Connect IoT, which allows you to uh, connect VKS to smart networks tools and capture torque values automatically, seamlessly. So the operator is not entering data, writing it on a piece of paper. We can capture that stuff kind of in process. So, Industry 4.0, we had a lot of hands in the room, so this is probably not new information to some of you. To some of you, it may be uh, relatively new. Uh, Industry 4.0 is really about the smart factory, right? It's about uh, the accessibility to all the data you need. It's about integrating the people in the operation, the, the equipment in the operation, uh, and the data collected in the operation to help you make better decisions in the factory. It's about machine monitoring. It's about digital software solutions like VKS, right, and other, and other packages out there. You're going to see a lot of those around here, OEE applications, work instruction applications, uh, a, a lot of machine monitoring stuff you're going to see around the, around the show today. But from our perspective, right, we know, based on experience, that even in an Industry 4.0 world, people continue to be a critical component of that factory. So where do people fit in, right? Some of the fear... Uh, today, and, and some of it is well-founded, right? We know that, a, that, that there are humans losing their jobs in manufacturing because of automation. Uh, that, that is a, it's a, a, it's a well-grounded fear, I think. Um, but, it, but again, people will, I think, always have an important role in manufacturing. And that's one of the reasons why uh, VKS exists, right? We want to help um, integrate not only all of those smart Industry 4.0 technologies, but also bring the, bring the operator uh, and the people into the mix, right? Connect them to the right information, to the right data capture tools uh, that they need to really become part of that integrated Industry 4.0 smart factory. <clears throat> so what does the operator need, right? If we're gonna effectively integrate them into this, into this new world of manufacturing where there's a lot more automation and robotics uh, and fewer people, how do we integrate them? One thing we can't do, right, is integrate people into this factory without the right information and without access, easily, easily, easy accessibility to the right information. So one of the things we want to do is provide work instructions, job instructions, process, uh, detailed process instructions on how to set up equipment, how to maintain equipment, how to maintain facilities, how to do inspections, that kind of thing. And then provide them easy access to things like setup sheets, things like drawings, BOMs, uh, that kind of information. In a lot of factories today, you all know it's true, right? A lot of this information, again, is still in paper or it's on a drive somewhere as a PDF that no one looks at, no one has time to find. They don't know where it is and they don't really want to read it. Uh, so, the, so, it so it's about getting them the right information in the right format so that it becomes valuable again. <clears throat> so what's the downside to using paper, right? Or, or using, even, even if it's not paper, even if it is electronic, but it's not really accessible. Um, I go into a lot of factories where the companies have done a reasonably good job at creating work instructions, but if you talk to people in the shop, you go down to the shop floor and ask them, they have no idea how to find, locate, read, use these, 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 this documentation. 
and so I think whether it's paper or whether it's some other electronic format, all of these, all of these, uh, all of these downsides really apply, right? Outdated documentation is really difficult to handle. So if you've got laminated work instructions out on the shop floor or paper in binders or something like that, you have to actually print this new documentation, get it approved through the process, get it out to the shop, pull out the old outdated information and replace, replace it with the new stuff. Not really effective. Uh, and by the way, no one's looking at it anyway. It's difficult for those people to understand, of course, right? They're, if it's all text-based, they're not gonna read this information. If it's kind of the standard, typical SOP format, I've been there, I've seen it, I don't understand it even today. So uh, the goal of an electronic solution like VKS is to really get it into a picture format, video format, something much easier and much quicker to understand. So some of the benefits of going paperless, electronic work instructions, MES systems, right? We all know what the, what the, uh, the benefits are. Version control built, built into some of these applications. So you reduce the risk of someone doing a process incorrectly because they don't know about the new process, right? They're more visual, they're easier to use. You can pull people right off the street, basically, and teach them how to do a job because it's there in pictures uh, and, 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 very, and very easy to understand. Collaboration is a lot easier. All of those ideas, and you all know this is true, right? Ideas are generated off the shop floor. There's just no effective vehicle to get that information bubbled up from the shop floor to the people who are creating the documentation. Electronic solutions can really help you do that. And that happens to be, by the way, higher levels of collaboration will really impact the people's uh, compliance with the process, right? Why do they care? Because they actually had a hand in creating it. So where do you begin? You know, Industry 4.0 is a, is a, is a huge topic. Uh, and a lot of manufacturers today are a long ways from where they want to be uh, in terms of in Industry 4.0. So the, the analogy I like to use is, uh, is Mount Everest, right? You don't see climbers, even the best climbers in the world don't climb Mount Everest in one day. They have a series of base camps where at each base camp they make adjustments to their equipment, they make adjustments to their plan. Industry 4.0 should be tackled in the same way, right? The first step is to identify where to begin. And you're going to want to prioritize uh, based on a lot of different issues, depending on what's important to you and your factory. Some of those issues could be low productivity, a lot of quality problems. You could have areas where traceability is really important, serialization uh, and correlating serialized components with the data that applies to them. You could have areas where you're losing people and those people ha contain a lot of tribal knowledge and you really don't want to lose. When that stuff walks out the door, you have to recreate that knowledge uh, and that's going to be a huge financial impact and, uh, and, and impact, again, on productivity and quality, of course. So, of course, you know, we're going to address this like we would any other problem in manufacturing, right? We're going to apply some of the lean mentality, the plan, do, check, act uh, approach, and the continuous improvement approach, right? Again, the Everest Mountain, let's climb at base camp at a time. So, Kind of a step-by-step -step guide, right? We, we, we actually have some documentation that we share with, uh, um, not just with customers, but on social media with, with, with every, everyone, right? Some, with some recommendations on how to approach this. Uh, as I mentioned before, prioritization is important. A plan is important. Once you decide to execute that plan, step one is to move your documentation to an electronic format. Not smart work instructions, not really industry 4.0, but you're, you're starting, you're right, you've, you've packed the bag and you've gotten on, you've gotten on the plane to, uh, to head over there to the mountain. You may be using, maybe you may have drawings, you may have, uh, it may not be beautiful, right? You may not have integrated data capture and all this productivity monitoring, but you've got some place to start. Step two would be then to create that documentation in a format that operators really understand. Show the work happening from their point of view. You can see here we're looking at a part we're looking at it from the operator's perspective, right? So they don't have to think about what this means. They can see it, what it really looks like where they're, where they're operating. Step three is to build in all the data capture stuff. Now we're, we're up to like, uh, I don't know, camp two now or something, right? We've got the data capture forms in here. We're, we're capturing data. We're capturing uh, inspection confirmations. We've got a lot of traceability to data now. We've got accountability happening. You can follow up with specific operators that did a specific task at a specific time on a specific part. Information that before, if you were, in, uh, were using paper at the time, was going to be very, very difficult to find, right? <clears throat> Step four is to 
start monitoring productivity, right? A lot of these, a lot of uh, electronic solutions will have productivity monitoring KPIs built into the application. So from the standpoint of a management team, this is going to give you a lot more visibility to what's going on than a paper shift summary or something like that, right? I've seen those a million times in my career. I've probably been guilty of creating those. <clears throat> and step five is to kind of bring it all together, right? Create a workstation. I know this is kind of simplistic, but uh, you, you get the idea. You'll see something like this at our, at our booth, by the way. We have kind of a, a setup like this. <clears throat> but step five is about bringing it all together, right? Bringing the technology uh, of the electronic documentation here into the, into the work center with integrated data capture, confirmations, uh, so, you know, compliance reports, that kind of information. Uh, connecting equipment to it, as I mentioned. That's kind of where Industry 4.0 starts to come into this. Connecting smart tools so that the work instructions are advancing and keeping in sync with the operator. And we're also collecting data from that tool. And then, by the way, we're monitoring the operator's productivity real time. <clears throat> really, the same thing applies to more automated equipment as well, right? The operator is going to need setup instructions, data capture, uh, inspections, load, loading instructions, unloading instructions, service and maintenance instructions, that kind of thing. But you'll see a lot of the same terminology here, of course. But just like climbing Mount Everest, right, this is not an easy task. Implementing even, the, even step one there, right, even going that first step to the first camp to get those, pa those paper instructions into something more mobile, electronic, and easy to use is not going to be easy. You're going to face a lot of issues, and I see this all the time when I visit customers. You have, you have basically lack of buy-in across the plant, right? People who think that their process is not broken, they don't see, they can't see the forest for the trees, basically. So really, what the solution to that is kind of, you know, it's about people, right? Bring people into the loop, get them involved in, in the solution. It's one thing I always recommend to, to folks is that they bring, especially if your resistance is coming from the shop floor, get the operators involved heavily in the development of this stuff. <clears throat> Figuring out where to begin, right? We kind of talked about that. Use some of those lean tools that you guys already know about, I'm sure, to kind of help implement the strategies. And then how do you sustain these improvements? A lot, of these, a lot of these paperless solutions, right, have tools built in to help you manage compliance and drive compliance. Um, but auditing, of course, just like any other continuous improvement process, is, uh, is an important uh, component of that. <clears throat> so I think the benefits are clear, right? I probably don't even need to review this slide. It's, it's pretty obvious. Improving standardization, getting documentation out of paper, out of formats that are difficult to access and understand, uh, that's going to quite dramatically and quite quickly drive down defects, drive up productivity, just like we saw at our sister manufacturing plant. Increased traceability from a manager's perspective, increased accountability from everyone's perspective, right? An operator being held accountable for the tasks that they've done, the data they've collected, how they did their work, the author's perspective, uh, accountability from the author's perspective about documenting it correctly, <clears throat> reviewers and approvers approving that documentation or releasing it to the shop floor. But basically, it's about profit, right? None of us are in business if we can't make a profit. We should actually have this at the top probably of this slide. Uh, but that's the reality, right? All of this stuff drives profit. So where's industry 4.0 going next, right? This is a silly picture here, but the reality is more robotics, more automation. It's just going to be a fact of life in manufacturing, I think, right? So we got to, again, figure out where the, the humans uh, kind of interface with that additional automation. Secondly, you know, augmented reality is something that keeps coming up. Uh, every, one, every one of these shows I go to, just about every time, someone walks up to me with an AR headset. Uh, and they want to talk to us about how VKS is going to be integrated in one of those headsets in the future. So this is definitely coming down the pipe. We know companies that are already using this technology for things like work instructions and data capture. Um, so get ready to see this if you haven't already in, 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 in a facility near you. So any questions from anybody in the audience? Nothing? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I can't. Hello. Thanks, Ryan. So what do you mean when you say machine monitoring? So we're, what type of monitoring do you do? Yeah, we're talking about OE, uh, equipment efficiency, that kind of thing. Downtime, uptime. 
Yep. Notifying the right personnel when a machine goes down. Any other questions? So we are at booth. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry. What it, so the question is, in a nutshell, what is Industry 4.0? It's a difficult question. It, it, I think at the highest level, right, it's about an integrated smart factory. It's integrating the equipment, the data, and the people into one kind of harmonious function, right? From one harmonious tool that all works together and is able to make smart decisions uh, much more effectively than we do today. Yep. So again, guys, we're at booth 1255. Please stop by and see us if you have any other questions. I'll be sitting over here also under the VKS sign for, for uh, the next 15 or 20 minutes if you want to visit, okay? Thanks a lot.